let's get started. So in the day one, we have just discussed about the uh, you know, welcome to the session on effective cloud security governance, a CISO's guide. And I'm Krish. As today, we have basically discussed about the cloud, the fundamentals of cloud security and the cloud security landscape. And today, we'll discuss about cloud security framework and the cloud security best practices and leadership and communication for effective governance in cloud. Okay. So. To recap what we have discussed team yesterday, we have discussed about the concept of cloud computing and we have discussed about the key benefits we get in terms of cloud computing and what are the challenges we have in the cloud adoption strategy and we have also discussed about the uh, various factors, uh, you know, various threats which can be basically there in cloud computing. This is what uh, so we'll today we'll actually go through the for the things like we'll talk about the compliance inheritance enterprise cloud security governance and kind of stuff so to start with team uh, as i discussed yesterday when you basically go for a cloud platform whether it can be any cloud platform when you go for a cloud platform the cloud is actually something where the threats are ever evolving like in fact it will keep on increasing day by day and you can find new and new vulnerabilities which is uh, you know being uh, figured out and basically being getting fixed day by day right so this is some examples we are having to start with team first of all we have something called as a insufficient identity and access and key management then we have an insecurity page like this we have multiple cloud security threats now what what is the major reason why we need to have a proper governance there as i discussed in the previous session when you basically go for a cloud platform one major part or one major thing which we have to keep in mind is that governance is a key activity which a business has to perform Right. So for example, I am part of a business and basically in my business, I want to make sure that I can have a effective, uh, you know, uh, understanding of the business requirements, business mission and vision. Then also I have to understand the stakeholder or the, the you know, the business owners needs and to make sure that that functions can be achieved, that activities can be done to achieve that particular objectives gracefully through a proper framework where we, we that's a that's an example where we have policies right so, so for, for example let's say why do we have something called as a cloud security policy why do we have something called as a password policy so the reason why we have a policy in a company is because it will basically help us to implement the governance policy is a key for corporate governance right this is basically one major thing which we have to understand now uh, if you remember yesterday we have discussed about the concept of something called as a compliance and regulatory challenges like as i discussed before when you go to a cloud platform or on premises the regulation compliance will always become the liability of the cloud service consumer so as i asked you yesterday team just in case if the cloud service provider is compliant with the standard let's say for example i am currently going to a cloud platform and if my cloud service provider is having the proper uh, hipaa or gdpr or pcds or except things like that does it mean can i skip the certification team or can i skip the attestation team would you feel no right as we discussed yesterday it is a no the, <coughs> sorry the reason why it's a no because team we are the data owners we are the data controllers so obviously what happens when you go for a business at the end of the day the data owner becomes liable and legally responsible for any kind of a data security legal regulatory and compliance challenges but there is some perks also which we are getting in the governance perspective when you go to a cloud platform one best example for this is basically what we call as a compliance inheritance okay this is a very common example we are having which is called as a compliance inheritance so let me give an example for this team so in the last session we have discussed about a standard called as a pci dss right when you basically go for a pci dss how many controls we have to evaluate for pci dss 12 right we have to comply with 12 controls for uh, you know complying with the pci dss now the point is that when you basically say that when you have to control comply with the 12 controls so is it mandatory that we have to comply with all these 12 controls if you want, want to get pci dss compliant yes right indeed yes right that's a very important point so what happens is that when you go to a cloud platform we have a concept called as a compliance inheritance that means that out of these things there are certain controls which is not in the scope of the cloud service consumer which can only be done by the provider that means that let's say that this is your cloud service provider and the cloud service provider is already compliant with the pci dss that means that those things or those areas of these controls which can only be done by the cloud service provider 
they are already compliant and those things you further take over or basically those things you deploy on top of the cloud platform you can basically take care of only the rest of the things so that is basically makes your compliance job easier when you go to a cloud platform so with the help of compliance inheritance the cloud service providers infrastructure is not in your scope is out of the scope of your customers compliance audit but whatever you build on the cloud platform is basically what your scope is okay this is what we call as a compliance inheritance so like this you know cloud provides you with a lot of benefits actually a lot of benefits in the in the sense you know cloud provides you with that so now uh, when you basically go for a cloud computing so how can this cloud impact the governance team so when you go for a cloud platform the major factor we have to keep in mind is that so the first thing is that team when you basically go for a normal governance you know what is a governance right but when you go for something called as a cloud computing the cloud computing have a serious impact on governance because the cloud introduce an entirely new strategy like for example normally what we have is that when you basically go to a on premises before an application okay for an application what all controls you can have when you go for a cloud platform can you do all these things by yourself in every platform like for example i'm going for a saas application is it possible for you to basically implement your own firewall there is it possible for you to implement your own encryption there no so if you go for a pass platform is it possible for a customer to take care of the os patching is it possible for a customer to ensure that there is a proper physical security by visiting the data center no right so the governance model entirely changes you depend a lot more on contracts slas and other audit and assessment reports instead of the normal regular kind of a it infrastructure so when talking about governance this is one major thing we are having it will shift your uh, you know technicalities and complexity which you are do normally doing in the on premises to what the cloud service provider offers you so that means that you want encryption you want access control and all in the on premises you have a customized policy for that but if you go for a cloud platform you are blindly depend upon what you are depend upon the slas and contracts the audit and assessment reports third party reports and all right so that is how the whole thing is changing in the cloud platform right so when you say cloud security governance so in short if you talk about the word called as cloud security governance it is something which refers to the policies process and procedures the entire business will establish to make sure that we manage the whole security of the cloud platform right again now the next question so krish does it mean that uh, when you say cloud governance or cloud security governance does it mean that are we talking about a scenario where we are completely you know leaving the part and we, we will allow the provider to take care of it no no when you basically go for a cloud governance it means that team we want to make sure that whatever we are going with the cloud platform is properly aligned with our governance requirements we want to make sure that whatever policies and everything is properly aligned with the business requirements as well it's not like you know something where you know we are simply going to blindly rely the cloud service provider okay so again part of cloud governance we have multiple things one is called as a cloud adoption strategy we have to have a step by step process on moving to cloud platform so uh, so do you know what happens when a business blindly go to cloud platform without any plan without any structured approach what happens if the if a cloud if a company is going to cloud platform one day morning it can either it can it can end up in huge cost or security issues or business downtimes or lot of liabilities that's the reason why almost every vendors like microsoft are giving something called as a cloud adoption framework see this team so starting from getting starting the strategy to basically have a proper plan for it okay like we have a proper strategy there you from the getting started to a proper strategy to plan the whole process getting ready for migration doing a proper migration securing it like this there is a proper step by step guideline given by the vendors for adopting the cloud platform it's not a one day process you have to follow where you have to simply go and blindly uh, you know take care of the or move to the cloud platform but instead of that there must be a proper strategized approach or step by step approach for you to basically go to the cloud platform that is the first thing when talking about cloud governance having a proper cloud adoption framework is one of the most important activities we have to keep in mind the second thing is that accountability team okay accountability so what is an accountability what do you mean by accountability team i will i will say two words actually i'll say two words there one word is accountability and i will say the second word as consistency 
there must be two words you have to keep in mind accountability and consistency so when you go to a cloud platform as i discussed before you have something called as a shared responsibility model if somebody asks you in the governance perspective what is a major difference the answer is shared responsibility model right you need to go to a cloud platform you have a shared responsibility model and will we basically use a shared responsibility model based on service models team will you basically go for a shared responsibility model based on ias pass and sas is it like that what did we discuss yesterday we simply take a service ias and we'll say that it's having our responsibility or their responsibilities like that no how do we do that we take each particular service and for the service we are taking we want to make sure that for that service what exactly is my responsibility and what exactly is their responsibility so clearly defining the roles and responsibilities of cloud security within the organization on the cloud platform is basically very important so everyone involved in the particular cloud project in your company must understand their security obligations and also we have to make sure that when you go to the cloud platform also this is basically very important for us now let me give you one more thing now i am joining a, in your company okay i am joining in your company and how do i know who is responsible for this activity who will take care of this who am i have to call if there is an issues coming up how do i have a track of all these things team can i simply ask my manager but that is that makes it to make way much complicated right uh, i'll give me a simple thing raise metrics we have to create some it's a actually in fact you know it's a super important thing we have we have something called raise metrics which stands for r a c a responsible accountable consulted informed okay so there must be a there must be someone or something who is or some team which is responsible for some activities accountable for all the actions consulted if there is any issues and Uh, informed that means they must be always in the cc like that so it is super important for you to basically have a raci matrix like this i have this template if you check my linkedin you will find this i have shared this template file on linkedin for others also this is a very very critical example we are having have a proper raci matrix when talking about especially when talking about cloud adoption framework or when talking about cloud adoption or cloud security responsibility model having a raci matrix in your company will give you a clarity regarding the responsibility or the responsible accountable consult informed persons in your company now you know that these are the activities you are giving to the cloud service provider but you also have to understand in our business inside our business what is basically going to happen who is basically responsible for each activities so that is also very important right so having a proper raci metric is super important for us okay that is basically what we call as a accountability okay and i told you one more word right consistency team what is this consistency accountability i hope all of you understood right so we have something called as a consistency as well when you go for a cloud platform we also need something called as a proper consistency so what is that actually so i i'll give an example here for this when talking about the word called as consistency so assume that we have a business okay we have a business and our business have a very strict password complexity requirements on the on premises okay so now now in my in my company there is some compromise happened and my cisos and all the team members in the company is got panicked and they create a strong policy which basically have a very strict password complexity requirements but my question is that if you don't continuously monitor it if you do if you don't continuously improve it if you don't continuously enforce it on the cloud also can that be useful until unless you do these activities properly can this particular policy be useful or work in the way you expected no right that is the reason why i'm saying that consistency also matters in governance this is one word which most people don't tell you consistency is what matters after accountability the next important word is basically what we call as a consistency okay now the next thing is that now next thing is that we talk about the word called as risk management now when talking about risk management as we go, when you go to the cloud platform as we discussed yesterday when you go to the cloud platform we have a increased risk vector when you go to the cloud platform right so risk management is all about what risk management is all about proactively identifying assessing and mitigating the cloud security risk right the primary goal of a risk management cloud computing is to proactively identify 
assess and mitigate the cloud security risk right we have different models for that the one one common example we are having is called as a nest cyber security framework which we'll discuss in the next few minutes right then obviously we have to ensure security and compliance then we need to have a transparency or let's let's take two words here let's take two words called as trust and transparency we have a word called as trust and we have a word called as transparency now what is a trust so can you simply trust someone or some cloud service provider see i am a cloud service provider i am telling you i will i will do this for you i will definitely give you a i will give you a uptime of 99.99 percentage don't worry i'll do this to you but at the end of the day does it mean that gives you trust my simple my words will give you trust is that fine no right you have a trust based on contractual agreement you have a trust based on sla right that is one example i'll give you another example now if i if i give you two names here you, you are going to buy a new mobile phone so basically there's an apple mobile phone there is a abc mobile phone which one you will go for abc which one you will go for apple right obviously apple right the reason is because that is what we call as a reputation based trust okay that is basically what we call as a reputation based trust like the same way we can have it we have to measure the trust there must be a proper way we can basically have a reputation based trust sla and contract based trust evidence based trust like document third party reports and all like that so like the same way we have a trust we also need to have a proper transparency as well so what is a transparency transparency means that when you basically go for a cloud platform or on premise or anywhere especially in cloud okay if you want to have a visibility of what is happening in the cloud platform there must be a transparency this lack of transparency is what the reason why many companies don't want to go to cloud platform and i'll give an example team so for example if you see that many cloud service providers will start marketing they will show you that these companies are their customers already they will show you that these companies are basically you know using aws for all their activities or azure for all their activities and this is how we implement a security architecture on cloud like this many companies will post all these things right why they would do that to give up proactive transparency to basically give something called as a proactive transparency now when you ask some question the provider gives you reports documents is called as reactive like the same way there is a it is very important for us to have a proper trust and transparency when you go to the cloud platform and obviously cost when you talk about cloud governance the one major factor we are having is managing the cost of it because as you all know when you go to a cloud platform every action you are performing in the cloud is chargeable that means that if you deploy something you are getting charged for it if you forget to remove something still you are getting charged for it so getting charged is a very important challenge so basically managing a cost is a major factor we have to keep in mind when talking about the cloud platform and last one this governance must be done in a proper step by step manner it's not like you know we have to implement governance and the story is over right as a part of our corporate governance itself we have to have a cloud governance so cloud governance is not separate or something which we are do later we have to do the cloud governance as a part of our overall corporate governance part policy as a part of our risk management everything we have to do is a cloud as well so team now we'll discuss about a simple example i'm not going to go in deeper on this but i'll give you a simple example see there is a framework given by the nist right there is a framework given by the nist so team what is that it's actually a voluntary risk based approach to managing the cyber security when talking about cyber security we can basically approach cyber security and have a proper implementation in the pers- in a risk based approach right when you go for a cloud platform also we can use the same nist framework we can use the same csf cyber security framework when you basically go for a cloud platform to give you some examples of how we can do that let's take an example of a aws or any other yeah now latest one is 2.0 so we have a aws assume when you basically go for aws the first step is ident- what is identify identify means that we have to identify the functions and we have to identify the assets that means what first of all we have to identify uh, the functions what all things you are going to do in the cloud platform and basically what exactly is the activities happening in the cloud platform that is the functions what is the assets so let's suppose that we have some 100 servers running on amazon we have some uh, particular number of buckets who is holding sensitive information we have some security groups and firewalls which are basically uh, having a secure you know access to the servers like the same way we have to properly have a identification so don't forget team identification is a basically a phase where we identify the functionalities and assets we have in the cloud platform 
and we'll classify them as well in the second step which is basically what we call as a protecting the things so what do you want to protect you want to protect the particular in assets right your functionalities and assets you want to protect so uh, so first of all if you want to protect something you want to know what threats you're facing right so for example if i if i have to wear a jacket for you know uh, i need uh, first of all i need to know this particular country is going to be way too much cold and so that's the reason why i'm going to buy a winter jacket right like the same way i need to first of all know what kind of threats and vulnerabilities i am facing like unauthorized access to data ddos attacks uh, data breaches caused by malwares or misconfigurations sql injection mitm attacks so whatever it is i need to understand the threat vectors and vulnerabilities like for example uh, open ports is a vulnerability outdated software is a vulnerability so we have to identify these kind of particular threats and vulnerabilities and based on that we have to figure out the proactive measures or we have to figure out the protective mechanisms like encryption access control or detection tools monitoring tools incident management tools identity management me mechanisms etc right and the the next thing is what we call as detect what is a detect team detect means that now if you are not able to detect something on time is it is there any 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 benefit for all doing all these things no right so there must be a continuously monitoring or there must be a continuous monitoring enabled on your cloud infrastructure for every kind of security events like if you go to aws we have something called as a cloud watch cloud trail uh, security hub guard duty and kind of stuff like that if you go to azure we have a azure monitor azure log analytics azure sentinel a lot of tools are there right so we need to have a continuous monitoring of our cloud infrastructure for any kind of security events okay and we have to implement the proper controls for basically protecting it like waf etc and once you find something wrong on something wrong happened once something has happened you want to basically gracefully respond to it without affecting the business you have to respond to it and that is what we call as the what do you call a action which we do when when some unwanted activities occurs we have a step by step proactive approach or step by step approach to uh, you know fix it we call it as incident response incident management part yes right so we need to have a proper plan where we have to develop a proper incident response methodology i have made a whole video on that in the youtube you can check that actually but again you know in like we have to have a proper playbooks and run books for identifying how to perform this activity whom to call what to do what is the active and all these things are basically very important for us right that is basically what we call as respond and the last one is basically what we call as a recover so what is a recover so recover means that so we have to make sure that when there is an incident happen when there is a downtime happen when there is something goes wrong you need to have a proper mechanism to basically develop and test a proper disaster recovery plan a plan should be properly created for disaster recovery and it must be properly tested and it must be continuously verified so like this team we can apply the same and nest framework to the cloud perspective as well okay that's it. i'm just giving an example okay so have a proper plan for going to the cloud platform see as a ciso or as a you know as a management person you are not the one who has to involve in all the technical activities or you have to go and do this i'm saying but we as a ciso it's your responsibility to basically make sure that we have to ensure that these things are aligning properly happening properly as per the proper business requirements it's not like you go there and you open the console and do it but you have to ensure things are happening properly as expected you have to enforce the policies the the, the, the strategies and all right like that so let's discuss about how to build a proper step-by-step -step cloud governance framework okay how to build a step-by-step -step robust cloud governance framework it's quite interesting you know it's simple actually so i'll give you a simple approach let me know if there is any doubts you're having because this is basically testable uh, you know uh, you know always uh, testable in, in, in interviews and all they will definitely ask you questions regarding this in the interviews on how you do it and all i'm just giving you some examples there so first of all the first step on applying this particular you know uh, cloud governance framework okay applying the proper cloud governance framework is like we have to have a proper understanding of our cloud security objectives and goals now when you say cloud security objectives what do you mean by that team it is based on your business right 
you have to have a clear objectives and requirements this is what i expect from the cloud platform this is a kind of security i need in the cloud platform i must have a proper visibility over what i need or what i expect in the cloud platform and basically what level of security i expect for my data for example let's say i am i am taking my data to the cloud platform or on premise or anywhere let's say my data is pc dss compliant okay let's say i need to have a data which is pc dss compliant that means what we have to understand if you basically want to have a data which is pc dss compliant so that's what i'm saying that you have to define your clear security objectives align with your regulatory requirements your business goals your industry best practice etc then as a part of it you also has to have a proper inventory of your assets what do you want to protect now like for example this is the major reason why we basically go for something called as a uh, you know risk assessment and all i'll give an example now you have some thousand servers in your in your cloud platform you have a lot of data in your cloud platform you have a lot of stuff like this but when you have all these things in the cloud platform okay when you have all these things in the cloud platform but you don't have a proper you know understanding of which one is critical which is non critical is there any re any benefit for all this effort you're doing team like if you are not aware of un understanding or if you are not aware of properly uh, ver verifying what is a critical thing on that what is non critical etc then is there any point of basically doing uh, anything in the cloud platform team no point right so that means what i'm trying to say is that when you basically go to a cloud platform you have to properly understand that okay you have to properly understand that there must be a proper understanding of the assets in the cloud platform and which all things are critical based on the business okay so for example let's say now uh, you know uh, for example you want to achieve a compliance with hipaa okay you want to achieve a compliance with hipaa so when you basically want to achieve a comp compliance hipaa and minimize the data breach risk what we will do so basically uh, you know we need to have a proper objective for that this is my objective i want to comply with the hipaa and minimize the data breach and there must be a proper mechanism for measuring it because if you are not able to measure things it's not worth it right so you must so the, I, i'll give an example for your objective i want to reduce the unauthorized access incidents by 50% i want to achieve 99% coverage of cloud resources with encryption like the same way or i want to protect customer data so basically i have to clearly define what is the reason why we are having for a cloud security governance framework then the next thing is that we have to understand something called as what is a shared responsibility model so when you go to a cloud platform okay let's say we go to aws or azure or any cloud platform as i told you before we have a shared responsibility model where the cloud service provider is responsible for securing their infrastructure their data center infrastructure and as a customer you are responsible for securing uh, your data your applications and everything you are hosting on the cloud platform so if you want to basically have a proper shared responsibility model exactly get the pro proper demarcation point on what we can do and understand the level of security tools and services cloud is offering that is the most important step team understand the level of proper security tools and services the cloud is offering you like for example let's say if you go to aws we have a tool called as aws identity and access management aws security hub aws kms for key management azure key vault like the same thing so once you have a proper understanding of the uh, shared responsibility model in the cloud platform then what we have to do is that we need to basically go for something called as a risk assessment it's a comp it's a bit detailed process which i have i will make a video on that for sure but again team when you go for a cloud platform that is one major thing you have to have a proper risk assessment like the same way we do risk assessment on premises we also has to perform a comprehensive risk assessment in the cloud platform to identify the potential like for example let's say now uh, you know uh, okay we have a aws security hub okay for security hub we must be able to continuously monitor threats so basically what are the common threats we are basically having in our business how do i basically ensure that these things are properly mitigated like that and based on the kind of threats you are facing you have to put the pro you have to create proper policies there for data protection for security and all you have to create proper policies and once the proper plan is clear once the proper strategy is clear we have to make sure that we implement the proper security controls and automate it now 
so one ma the major reason why we go for automation is that obviously it can reduce the number of errors and it we it can basically we can have basically have a quicker response with the errors we can have a quicker error response that why because now by the time you identify if you are doing things manually by the time you identify the threats and by the time you try to respond to it the attackers have good would have made all the th make things in trouble right so we need to have a mechanism to make sure that we properly identify the things on time and we have a proper response there without waiting for the actions to or you know manual actions to happen that's the reason why we have to have a proper automation there and we must be able to continuously monitor all these things so i'm giving this in a high level overview because you know we are in short of time but again understand this is a major important thing which we have to keep in mind so there is a this is a uh, you know we can discuss this with examples also when we get time for that but again just i'm giving some examples there so a few more things we will discuss so now the next thing is that we have to basically uh, you know understand understand one point that we this is cloud security is not something which we have to do as a you know as a uh, you know separate thing or as something which is which is not part of your regular strategy cloud security is something which we have to do as a part of our regular business activities that's a very important point we have to keep in mind okay when talking about cloud security it's not something which we are doing separately it's a part of your overall business activity that's a first point cloud security is not something separate it's a part of your overall business activity so we have to understand that when you go for a cloud platform we must be able to properly align with the ex proper business activities so for example that's the reason i'm saying that you know they have a proper con consistency because we have to make sure that when you do something in the on premises you have to make sure that that is properly taken to the cloud platform as well in the cloud platform we must make sure that whatever things we are having the on premises we must customize it for the cloud platform and and also enforce the similar things on the cloud perspective okay and the second thing is we have something called as a efficiency what is efficiency team so efficiency means that we have to make sure that now we have a proper security expertise and tools in the on premises so let me give you a, give you a point here team so i have a sim tool or i have a dlp tool i have a security solution in the on premises now my company is going to cloud this is one query i am getting let's say one query i am getting from my management that what shall we do is it like uh, shall we basically is it like that so what happens is that when you say you are going to the cloud platform okay you how can you basically have your own tool when you go for a pass think about that you are going for a pass and when you basically go for a pass how can you have your own tool in the pass not at all possible right how can you have your own tool in the sas not possible right so what i am trying to convey here is that when you basically go to a cloud platform either on premise or cloud especially in cloud what happens is that you need to have a proper me mechanism to make sure that you are aligning the tools and techniques to meet the cloud platform so either you have to go for cloud specific tools or you have to basically go for tools which are cloud aware which are basically developed for cloud platform that's a very important point team getting a proper tools for the cloud platform is super important for us it's not like we can use any random tools there for doing this we need to make sure that we go for tools which are designed for the cloud platform that's a very important point we have to keep in mind okay we need to go for tools which are basically aligned with the cloud requirements or basically designed for the cloud platform it's not like we can go for any random tool you want or basically the existing tool we have to research and we have to understand what is the best one which is meeting our requirements on the cloud and then go for it okay and the next one is basically what we call as a risk management now when you say risk management it doesn't mean that i am talking about uh, you know eliminating all the risk is it possible for us to eliminate all the risk team no right it is not possible for us to eliminate all the risk I, in any business in any business it's not possible for us to eliminate all the risk as you all know right when you say risk what happens that it what we basically do is that when you go for a cloud platform we don't eliminate the risk we can reduce the risk to an acceptable level that's the only thing we can do right the only thing we can do is that we can't eliminate the risk but we can reduce the risk to an acceptable level so basically the risk management is a holistic view or approach of identifying and managing the security risk across your entire it landscape and especially in the cloud platform so basically you know you know what what controls to put how this can controls can help you 
all these things you will be aware if you basically go for it right like that uh, in fact i am planning to make a complete video on practically how to assess a uh, you know risk assessment for the uh, you know cloud platform it's super easy it's not something which is basically very confusing super easy actually but let's do that okay don't worry now team the next thing is that we will discuss about some best practice or some key practices we have to review when you basically go for the enterprise cloud security governance. The first thing is the team identity and access management. Team, why, do you know? As I discussed, we discussed yesterday. We have discussed about something which is called as a single point of failure, right? The management plane, right? The management plane or the management console is basically what we called as a single point of failure. So basically, when you go for a cloud platform, having a proper identity and access management across your assets, across all your assets, across all your cloud services, across or across all your resources is basically very important because then only you will be able to have a because if you don't have a proper identity and access management, how can you basically make sure that things are fine? How can you basically make sure that uh, you know uh, your uh, you know your your things are secure so you have to make sure that you must have a effective identity and access management and i'll give an example for this i'll give you a simple example for this when talking about the word called as identity and access management we have a we have a, a best practice documents like uh, you know ci's benchmarks which will say that we must have a multi factor authentication when you go to a cloud platform it's basically mandatory for us to have a something called as a proper multi factor authentication we must have a proper multi factor authentication we must have a proper uh, you know uh, access control we must make sure that we always follow the principle of least privilege like this we have many principles which we have to follow when you basically go to the cloud platform and you can find a lot of documents and common example is what we call as a cis benchmarks Okay, the second thing which we have is basically what we call as a data security and encryption when you go to any cloud platform Talking about data is a major concern. We are having so basically for securing data in the cloud platform Data security and encryption is a very important thing which we have to keep in mind So what we do team we need to make sure that we must be able to properly identify and classify sensitive data We must be able to identify and we must be able to classify sensitive data and what we do team and for that particular data we are having we must be able to you know we must be able to properly classify the data and we must be able to enforce the proper controls like access control uh, regular backups resiliency and all this kind of stuff okay that's it the third thing which we are and for example let's say team now i am i'm storing my data let's say we are storing a healthcare data so what we have to do we have to basically make sure that we are storing it in a proper cloud platform we have to make sure that that store the data is based properly you know marked as confidential that data is marked as highly confidential we have to encrypt our data like this we have to follow the best practices the next thing is that container security workload what team what is a workload so workload is something which basically runs on the memory or runs on the cpu and memory okay like whether your vm okay whether your vm or whether your you know whether your vm or whether your containers or basically your pass services we need to make sure that we have a proper mechanism for securing all these particular kind of stuff so we want to make sure we must have a proper regular vulnerability assessment we need to have a proper patch management so when you go to the cloud platform can we skip the patch management team like I'm going to the cloud platform doesn't mean I can skip the patch management part. No, right at the end of the day It may be a shared responsibility if you go for IaaS, it can be a responsibility of your company If you go for a pass it can be a responsibility of the cloud service provider So it is shared but again, it is basically very important when you go to the cloud platform again Like this the same is applicable for containers container images So for example now we have a container image repository. Let's say if you go for AWS we have a AWS ECR if your Azure, uh, Azure ACR is there. So this is something where we have to scan the images for vulnerabilities, right? Like that. And then we have something called as a proper security configuration. What is security configuration management team? When talking about the word called a security configuration management means that uh, you need to have a prop, like I'll give an example. Team, do you know companies now, why companies go for IAC infrastructure as a code? It's a common thing. Now companies go for something called as a IAC or infrastructure as a code. Do you know why they go for it? So one major reason is that you need to have a consistency of deployment of resources based on certain frameworks all over the business for all the accounts and all. So you, you can have a proper, you know, 
uh, unmodifiable, completely secure infrastructure. So basically, when you go for a configuration management, okay, you need to make sure that you must have a definitely like you know if there is one one code if there's a change we want to do we can simply modify the code and just run it that's it the story is over it will completely may make the whole in friends uh to the latest one right like the same way so for example when you go for a cloud platform we have to use the proper configuration management tools to make sure that we are having a visibility of all the vms all the containers all everything in the cloud platform one best example is basically the aws systems manager security hub etc right like that and the last one we are having is basically what we call as a continuous monitoring and logging so basically these are the areas we have to keep in mind when talking about the uh, you know uh, cloud security governance best this is something which we have to look into when talking about the cloud security governance strategy and the last one is basically what we call as a continuous monitoring and logging what is continuous monitoring and logging team when talking about continuous monitoring and logging see every action in the cloud platform is basically always something need to be monitored so what we have to do is that we have to make sure that we can we must have a continuous monitoring for all the activities happening in the cloud platform for example for example we need to make sure that we need to have a proper mechanism for logging all our api calls what is an api call any any login requests or any kind of access coming to our cloud systems must be properly recorded that's like in aws we have a something called as aws cloud trail if you go for something azure log analytics we have different tools but again it's very important for us to implement tools for that and uh, i'll tell you an example for that let's say for example there is a company we basically have a uh, all security tools configured so if you basically see an unusual login attempt or you see an unusual access pattern there is a one particular user who is not supposed to access something he is now now regularly trying to access some resources it can happen right so those kind of things can be a challenge so what we do is that we need to make sure that we continuously monitor we continuously monitor and we must continuously analyze so for example if there is a unusual login attempt happened that can most probably be what most probably a potential security breach right like the same way so these are my examples i'm giving you for a governance these are some areas or things which we have to keep in mind when talking about the cloud security governance and obviously for making these things more better we can use cloud security poster management tools we can give the employees a proper cloud security awareness training all these are additional practices which can basically help our business and the goal of a CISO is basically to make sure the team for all these things we need to have a proper strategic alignment to make sure that all these activities are aligned with the business requirements and that makes sense for the business that's it okay that's the thing in infosec train what we do is the team so basically just to give an example uh, update on this so what we do is that uh, we are basically having a program we have having a customized program called as advanced cloud security governance uh, which is basically talking about all these activities in a bit more detail in a more practical aspect but again you know just this is just a high level overview i've given you and uh, i'll try to upload more videos and basically make sure we'll start more webinars on this on risk management etc so it'll be coming up soon so we'll see in the next webinars coming up and definitely you know we are planning for more things on cloud risk assessment and a lot of things like that for sure thank you team see ya